I pushed my button and the window came down. <laughs> I'm showing my age right now. <laughs> I, I pushed the button, the window came down, and the driver on the other side, and he looked at me and said, what did you do that for? And I said, didn't, didn't you see what was happening? He said, why are you in such a foul mood? <laughs> I said, Merry Christmas to you. I said, Merry Christmas back. <laughs> I pushed my button, the window went back up, and I sped away and as fast as I possibly could. But, but I want to tell you, you know, sometimes there's that whole sense of what the world teaches us to do can create such negativity in our bodies. You know, I mean, I, I really thought, you know, am I going to let this person really aggravate and spoil my evening? Or am I just going to say, okay, just give God the glory, <laughs> let it go and continue to live in the blessing. I mean, I had to live in the blessing that I didn't smash my car up. I had to live in the blessing that I didn't hit this woman who, uh, and I, it was a woman, I'm gonna make that very clear. Um, hit this person who had driven in front of me. Ooh, you have to be so careful around here. This person who drove in front of me, and I'm glad that I didn't hit her, or him, or whoever it was that was driving at the time. <laughs> <laughs> to live in the blessing instead of allowing that to really spoil my evening just to live in the blessing that I was still in one piece you know this morning we got to church and uh, literally about five minutes before the nine o'clock service and uh, several of us were in the church office and several people were out having coffee on the lawn and um, suddenly this car just came from nowhere and uh, uh, um, just smashed into one another right outside the church here and the airbags went off and, um, you know, we, I, we came running out and there was a, a Mini Cooper and there was coffee everywhere, uh, not our coffee. She was drinking a cup of coffee and, you know, thank God, yeah, I had to go back to Starbucks. Um, and, and, and both drivers just got out of their car without a scratch. And one of the drivers was pregnant. Um, and and I, I want to tell you, we lived in the blessing lived in the blessing that neither of them were hurt, that the child was not, the unborn child was not hurt, the other woman was not hurt. But you know, I tell you, it could have affected my whole day, it could have affected our whole day. But the presence of the holy reminds us to live in the blessing, even with all of the stuff that we have to face on a day-to-day -day basis, to live in the blessing, to live in the blessing that things could be worse, live in the blessing that People are far off, far worse off than many of us are. Now, and I know that you know, for some of us it feels like things are really tough right now. But the reality is that when you look at it from a global perspective, you know, at, least, at least we have a food bank that we can go to if we need food. There are thousands upon millions of other folk who have so much less than we do. And the, ble the blessedness that we have is that we get to come and to believe in a Jesus, to believe in a God who is with us Amen. and who calls us to live in the blessings of life, to live in the blessings. Now, I've decided that in 2010, 2010, or whatever it is that we want to call it, that we must live in the blessing. Because if there's going to be any shift in the world, it's going to happen because you and I decide no longer to live with the way the world wants us to, to live, but to live in the blessedness of Christ. Amen. To live in that blessedness who wants the very best for us, who wants us to care for one another, who wants us to love one another as God loved us. That's the blessing that Jesus comes on this epiphany to give to us. A blessed assurance that there is a better plan for us. Now, now, I'm not one who believes in predestination. But you would look at this reading from Ephesians and you might think that there is some predestination about, about Scripture. I want to tell you the only predestination I believe is that God wants us to believe in God. And that if we decide to believe in God, then there is some blessings that we get out of that knowing that God is with us. 2010 can be such a positive year for us, but it can only be a positive year for us as if we choose today to live in the blessing, to live in the knowledge of a God who so overwhelmingly and lavishly loves us, 
to live in the blessing that that God is upholding us and lifting us up right now. To live in the blessing of knowing that Jesus was sent into the, to the world so that we had a, a God that, was, that we could see. It, it was no longer a, a that, that was up here. It was a God who was here, right in the midst of us all. A God who is present with us. And that that Jesus who grew up to be an adult and a youth and a young adult and eventually would die for us, that that God who was incarnate with us is is no longer distant in the clouds but is present by the the Holy Spirit that covers us in this The Holy Spirit. I'm claiming for this church a Holy Spirit, a, a spirit of unity and a spirit of love and a spirit of grace. A spirit that says that, that all things are possible for those who choose to live in the blessing. And, and, and we get to choose that. You see, we don't, we don't believe in a God who, who bangs us over the head and says, you must live this way. We believe in a God who, ex, uh, who invites us to choose to live that way. And I don't know about you, but I think sometimes we just have to choose it every day. Every moment. To choose to live in that blessing. So that by living in that blessing, there's something that changes up here. Last year I subscribed to, a, actually it was two years ago, I subscribed to a website called Go Gratitude. And um, uh, some of you I know uh, also did, did that in a couple of years ago. And uh, this year I've been receiving just the odd email from them every now and again. But Go Attitude or, was, reminded me and I hope reminds us that if we step into every moment with a sense of gratitude it can change, it can shift, that things can be really different if we go at things with a sense of gratitude and thanksgiving, if we get to choose to live in the blessing and not by what the world counts as a blessing. You see, see what Jesus counts as a blessing is that we got to get up this morning. I mean, that, that's it, that, that we, get, we got to get up this morning. I mean, what a blessing that we got to get up. Um, what a blessing that we were able to, to choose to come to worship this morning. I, I want to tell you, I've decided that 2010 for me is going to be a year in which I go even deeper into my own spiritual journey with God. Not just to live on the, on the surface, but to live more fully and more completely in the knowledge of a God of grace and truth. A God who expects certain things from me. And a God who invites me to make that real in my life. I, I want to pray and hope that that's what we choose to do as a church. That we choose to, as a church to go deeper into our, think, our knowledge of giving God the glory for all things.